Hi, my name is Justine Harkness, and in this video, we'll look at how to rank leaving group stability based on both charge and atomic radius. Now remember from the identify leaving groups that good leaving groups are going to be weak bases because they'll be stable with the electron density they acquire when they leave. Now if we have two different forms of a leaving group, we have its uncharged form and its negatively charged counterpart, essentially hydroxide would be the conjugate base of water. If we compare them in terms of stability, water is a weak base, and as a weak base, it's stable in solution, which makes it a good leaving group. On the other hand, hydroxide is a very strong base. So it's not stable in solution, it's very reactive, and this is what makes it a very bad leaving group. Overall, your uncharged counterpart will always be more stable and hence a better leaving group. Now let's take a look at how the size of the molecule matters. Now generally speaking, a leaving group that has a larger atomic radius is going to be more stable. And let's think of this with just an example you, know, you might see in real life. Say you have a 45 pound weight and you need to give it to someone. That 45 pound weight would be like you know, a pair of electrons. If we were to give that 45 pound weight to say a toddler, the toddler is not going to be able to hold that weight. He's not strong enough. He's too little. He's going to be really unhappy. But say you give that 45 pound weight to a professional bodybuilder. You know, we got some nice muscles on that guy right there. He is going to be just fine carrying that weight. He's stable. He has the body mass to support it. We see the same thing with atoms. If you have a very small atom like fluorine, fluorine doesn't have the size to hold a lot of electron density. Those, that negative charge is very concentrated over a small area. And remember, negative charge doesn't like to be concentrated. That charge is very unstable. And that's why fluoride is a really bad leaving group. If we look at our bodybuilder atom, that would be like iodine. Iodine is really big, it's towards the bottom of the periodic table, so we can spread out that negative charge over a very large surface area, and since that negative charge is very spread out, that negative charge is stable. So overall, leaving group stability will increase down the periodic table because atomic radius also increases down the periodic table. So now let's uh, look at some examples. So here we need to determine which of these molecules has the better leaving group. So let's take a look. If we had NH2 decide to leave, we would produce NH2 minus. Remember, NH2 minus is a very strong base. On the other hand, if we had NH3 plus leave, we would get just NH3, a neutral molecule. This is ammonia, and this is a weak base. So because ammonia is a weak base and NH2 minus is a strong base, ammonia would be the better leaving group. Now let's take a look at example B. Here we're comparing bromine and fluorine, and to do this, let's take a look at the periodic table. So bromine is located you know, towards the bottom of the periodic table. And if we were to locate fluorine, fluorine's located towards the top. Now, leaving group stability will increase down the periodic table. So since bromine is under fluorine in the periodic table, its larger atomic radius means that it is a better leaving group. Now let's take a look at one final example. Here we're comparing sulfur and nitrogen. So let's bring up our periodic table again and locate these atoms. So sulfur is located right here and nitrogen 
is right here. Now we actually have a couple different trends coming into play here and let's take a look at those trends. Now as we go from left to right across the periodic table, the atoms are getting more electronegative. And if you're more electronegative, that means you want electrons more. So as you go from left to right across the periodic table, you are a better leaving group. The other trend we see is size. As we go from top to bottom down the periodic table, we get a larger radius. And remember that larger atoms are more stable with negative charge. So this also makes for a better leaving group. So overall, as we go from left to right and top to bottom, we will get better leaving groups. So because sulfur is both under and to the right of nitrogen on the periodic table, it would be the better leaving group. So now you should feel more comfortable using atomic radius and charge to evaluate leaving group stability.